Hey everyone, it's Jose Pretty T back again, and this is 366 Days of Cards. Good day. Hmm. I'm not even sure what day it is. <laughs> it's a Sunday at all. That much I know. And today I'm going to do something a little bit different. This video may be a little bit longer than usual, so I apologize for that in advance. What I'm going to be doing is showing you, giving you a tutorial on how to create a mathematical trick. This is something I originally saw back when I was first getting started. I saw a tutorial. I don't know if it's Miss May that did it or somebody else, but I saw a tutorial. I thought it was very helpful. And I thought I would show it to you. So the first thing you want to do is set up your deck basically in some kind of an order that you can remember. New deck order or whatever. Take out the jokers and gaff cards and blank cards and double backers or anything like that. You can implement the jokers if you want into the trick. You can't put them in there. You, know, you put one on top, one on the bottom, whatever, but for purposes of, uh, purposes of this tutorial, I won't be doing that. So the way I set up the deck is I have it from top to bottom in the taste, which is clubs, hearts, spades, dimes. So I've got clubs, hearts, spades, and diamonds, and I have them all set up Ace for king and clubs, ace for king and hearts, ace for king and spades, oops, and of course ace for king in uh, diamonds. And it's important to remember, you know, the order that you got your cards in. Then what I also did on a piece of paper is I wrote down the numbers one through fifty-two, and I wrote each card, ace. Clubs, the king of clubs, and ace of hearts, the king of hearts, ace of spades, the king of spades, and ace of diamonds, the king of diamonds, so that I know what position in the deck they are in. And you can set it up, you know, I set it up in chase with clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. You can set up spades, hearts, clubs, diamonds if you want. You can set it up whatever you want, as long as you remember what position each card is in. Now all you have to do is start off the trick. Well, let me see how I would start off the trick. Obviously, you're not going to shuffle the cards. You're not going to cut the cards at this point in time. What you will do is say, now let's start by dealing the cards into three piles. left to right and we could eliminate the last card which is the king of diamonds so then we write that down deal cards into three piles left to right and you know what, we'll just put this one on here to keep the 52 cards in play then what you do is have one of the piles selected, you can use Magician's Force Magician's Choice, where you force a pile on the spectator, have them touch two piles let's say these ones and say ok, I'll get rid of those and we'll keep this one And now what you could do is do something else like deal and duck or deal the cards into two piles. So I'll try this. Deal the cards into two piles. And I'm going to eliminate one pile. Take center pile and deal in to two piles. And now we've got nine cards left. <coughs> and you 
could do deal and duck. Deal and duck. Until we have only one card left, and that card is the Eight of Clubs. I just write that down. up until one card is left. And this card is the selection. Now based on my paper, the eight of clubs is obviously the eighth card down from the top of the deck. So for the purposes of this trick that I just created, what you do is have the deck shuffled and cut. I expect that I'm totally satisfied. And we need to get their selection into the 8th position in the deck. Well, we need to force the 8th card in the deck. And one way you could do it is by having the Spectator deal the cards into piles of 8. Two, three, four. Six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the rest of the cards will put aside. We have them look at the bottom card on one pile, any pile, such as this one. Which is a stack of hearts, it's automatically in the eighth position. And then we have them drop that on top of another pile and just have them continue stacking the cards until they're satisfied, or until they're done, I should say, and put these on the bottom. And now we just proceed with first steps deal the cards into three piles from left to right. You can do some false cuts if you wanted to. Or even false ripple shuffle, just as long as we don't change the order, just so long as we leave that selection in the eighth position. And now we're going to magician force the center pile, so we'll have them you can do whatever you want, you can have them so, touch any pile. If it's the center pile, then we'll take that one and get rid of the rest. If they touch this pile, we'll get rid of it. Have them touch another pile. If it's this one, we'll use it. If it's this one, you get rid of it. Either way, we're forcing a center pile, and there's the jack of hearts. It's third from the bottom. So now, we're going to deal this into two piles. Again, left to right. Left to right, left to right. And again, we'll have them touch a pile. If they touch this one, we eliminate it. I think. Yes. That is correct. If, if, if they take their right hand pile, just touch that one, we'll eliminate it. If they touch this one, we'll use this one and eliminate this one either way. We're forcing this one on them. And we have eight. We have nine cards left in this case. And there's a card second from the top. Now we just do the deal and duck. Deal and duck. And now we have one card left, and it is the Jack of Hearts. And that's how simple it is to do a mathematical trick. All you have to do is set the deck in any order, do your mathematical moves, like you can deal cards into different piles, you can <coughs> you know, deal cards into three piles or four piles, then from there go into two piles, you can use Magician's Choice or Magician's Force, whatever you prefer to call it. To eliminate piles, you can end up with one card at the end, two cards, three cards, four cards, whatever you like. There's so many different ways of doing it. And then once you're done, those last cards, it might be just one card like I had, the Eight of Clubs. You might have two cards left over, three cards left over, four cards left over, whatever it is you're going for. Those cards, based on your list, will tell you what position 
the selections where the forces must be in in order for the twist to work. It's that simple. And then once you know that, you just got to figure out a way of getting the cords in that position like I did when I put the, I had them deal the cards into piles of eight, automatically forcing a card into the eighth position. All I had to do is look at the bottom card, stack that on top of the deck, and the card is in the eighth position, and they're none the wiser. They don't know that I just forced a card on them, and that card will be the last one they deal out. And they can do the whole trick themselves. They can deal the cards into three piles, and then into two piles, they can do the deal and duck. And it'll work out every time. Mathematical tricks will always work out, as long as you do the right. Anyway, hopefully, you all understood that and followed along pretty good. And hopefully, we'll see some tricks from you guys. This video is kind of aimed more at beginners, because I'm sure a lot of the more advanced guys out there already know how to do this and or are doing non-mathematical tricks. But either way, it's a, it's a good tool to know. As for creating non-mathematical tricks, all you have to do is come up with different moves. You might want to have a card selected randomly, or you might want to force a card with ripple force or some other way. And then you'd obviously want to control the card to the top or the bottom. You might want to have sandwich, you might want to do a fiddle trick with it, you might want to do a triumph. There's all sorts of types of tricks you can do, all sorts of types of forces and controls and slights. All you have to know, do to create a non-mathematical trick is put together a bunch of moves, a bunch of slights, and you're in. Just, you know, try to come up with something that's a triumph trick or a biddle trick or a sandwich trick or anything like that. And of course, again, for the mathematical trick, if you want, you can implement the jokers. Just put one on top, one on the bottom, or whatever you feel like it, just so long as you know the position of it. I did that before, one trick. I don't think I've ever done a performance of it. I don't even know exactly how it goes. But in the end, I ended up with three cards, two of them were jokers, and in between the jokers, they're selection. Perhaps I'll do that soon, or perhaps you can come up with a way to do that yourself. Anyway, I look forward to seeing some of your mathematical tricks, and let me know what you think of the video, and I'll see you next time.